So I was going to come out of the box and say, how's everyone feeling after last night's heat game? Are the nerves starting to kick in a little bit? I thought perhaps Solana, you know, Solana sets the the tone for the show with the music. And Mm -hmm. today is Perreo Friday and it's a a holiday weekend. And uh, I didn't know if we were going to get, you know, some sort of sad song to open the show (laughs) because I imagine that there are some people Starting to feel the spilkus a little bit here, Crowder. So Celtics uh, bring the series now to 3-2, and it returns to Miami tomorrow. Where is your mindset? I'm still good. If it played out different, if it was 1-1, 2-2, and then we won last night to make it 3-2, we'd be excited. I'm not jumping. I'm still where I was after we they made it 3-1. I'm fine. Until it's 3-3. At 3-3, I am in a full-out panic, not sleeping, can't eat. I'm going to be terrified if they lose on Saturday. Solana, I'm guessing that you're feeling okay because you you started out the the show here with upbeat music. So it seems like you're okay, but I'm wondering if that's actually masking a bad case of diarrhea. (laughs) There were certainly some runs this morning. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. I am not going to lie. I considered an emodium prior to coming into work. <laughs> but here's what I'm not going to do. Panic. I'm not happy about last night. We'll get into it, I'm sure. I'm very upset with the effort from your two best players. With that being said, you have an opportunity up three games to two, no matter how you got there, to close it out at home. I'm not panicking. I'm not doing the thing where we're doing a post-mortem on this series, up three games to two. Sorry, I'm just not doing it. So, hey, Jimmy Butler, Mm -hmm. Bam Adebayo, can you win one game at the Kaseya Center against the Celtics? It's the only question that there is. Can you win one game tomorrow night at the Kaseya Center? Can your effort level go from here to there? Can your intensity go from there to here? Can you win one game tomorrow at the Kaseya Center? And that's the question. Now, granted, yeah. Tatum's asking the same thing of his teammate. <laughs> Let me We've get one won more. plenty at the Kaseya Center. Yeah. And can we do it again tomorrow night? The the thing that, you know, I, I was thinking the way that you were when we when we first came on the air, you said, look. If it was 3-2 after five games, you didn't have any context. All you knew that the the eight-seed Heat were going to be up 3-2 after five games, you'd feel pretty good about it. Mm -hmm. The problem with that, Crowder, is because that was the angle I was going to take. And the more I thought about it this morning, the problem is I unfortunately do know the context, (laughs) which is the Heat were playing. Here's the thing that scares me. The Heat were playing at a level, certainly the first three games of this series, that we really didn't see this this season. Uh, Maybe we saw it against Milwaukee a little bit. I don't think you can really tell against New York. So we saw them play at a level for three games we really hadn't seen. Now I have the context, though. Are they regressing back to the team that we thought they were throughout the regular season? Or is this a two-game little bump and they'll get that mojo back. That's my only problem is that I, I I do have the context of what I've seen, which was the last two games, Boston looked like the team we thought Boston was going <laughs> to look like, and the Heat kind of looked like the team that we thought they were, the team that we watched for 82 games. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm just slightly trepidatious because – it really does. I was reading uh, Ira Winderman's Ask Ira column earlier today, and he says essentially the season's on the line tomorrow night because, like you said, it goes back to a game seven in Boston. You saw that place last night. <laughs> it was I rocking. don't want to do that. No, and, but the fear's not there, Hawk, to be honest. You're talking about watching these last two games. They didn't look like the first three games. And to, to to your to your point to your question is that because Boston's so much better in these last two, or the Heat aren't as aggressive? Bam and Jimmy combining for thirty, we can never win a game when that happens. Like 
Just waiting for those guys to come up. And the, your boy Duncan had it. He dropped him 20, Hawk. Congratulations. That dude is that dude. <laughs> that dude is that dude. He, he, he remembers how to shoot. But that's not the formula we saw. Like, I, I get on Bam all the time for not being offensively aggressive. And he wasn't yesterday. But even Jimmy was kind of, you know, Jimmy wasn't going in there and really trying to take over like we thought he'd take over, like we saw in Milwaukee, like we saw in the Knicks, and like we saw in those first three. Jimmy and Bam aren't being aggressive. This team's not making the playoffs if they play that way. So the the fear for me is if we can not even get back to what we thought we were, Hawk, if we can get back to playing the type of basketball that we saw success with. But the question is, did Boston do that to them? Or did, yeah, like, that's... and they turn it on themselves? I don't know, Solana. Like, what do you think? Because the bottom line is, if Jimmy and Bam don't play like stars, I'm not saying superstars, if they don't play like stars, you're not going to beat Boston. So why are Jimmy and Bam looking that way for two games? Not like they did for three games. Did Boston do something different, or are they maybe just gassed? I mean, this is long into the postseason. Yeah, yeah. I I rewatched the highlights from last night. Really, that first quarter. Um, I'm not seeing anything. Look, Boston's intensity level defensively is definitely on another level. So I'm not trying to take away anything from them, but. Jimmy and Bam combined for five of 16 field goals at halftime. The Heat, in the first quarter, had six turnovers that led to 10 Boston points. There was a stretch where Spo calls his first time out. 15-5, to five, Boston goes up. And you expected that, by the way, right? Crowd behind them. They're back at home, played a good second half. Again, their, their backs are against the wall. Expected them to come out hard. What bothered me was the Heat didn't respond, and it kept being those sloppy turnovers, lack of effort. And then after the game, Jimmy is saying we have to play harder right from the tip. Bam is saying we have to have more urgency. And I said this on the post game yesterday. How do you not have urgency in the first quarter of a closeout game on the road when you're missing your starting point guard? I don't understand that. The only players who had guts last night, you mentioned Duncan Robinson, yeah. Caleb Martin, Mm-hmm. and Haywood Highsmith. They played, those three played out of their minds. The problem is they can't close out the Celtics on the road in the Eastern Conference Finals. They need their two stars to step up, and they didn't last night. That's what worries me. How do you not have urgency? How are you lacking awareness, hustle? This Heat team prides themselves on always being, Crowder, what's the quote, the hardest working, most competitive, best conditioned, best conditioned team. Yeah. And you have the epitome. Those two guys are the epitome of that, right? Constantly having to outwork their opponents. And they've done that time and time again this postseason. I'm not mad that the Heat lost last night. They probably should have lost that game last night if you really think about it. Boston is not a team that's supposed to get swept. Second best offensive rating throughout the regular season. We saw a dose of it last night. I haven't seen anything from Boston where I'm saying, uh-oh, they found a weakness in Miami's game, and they're going to expose it, and there's nothing that he can do. I saw a team last night that wasn't ready to go steal a game on the road like they had to, and that's why they found themselves getting outscored by a large margin, 15 points in the first quarter. That's the game right there. That's the game. You couldn't afford to get down 15 in the first quarter and then not come out after that and just play on another level, and they didn't. They never got to the level you needed them to. What Jimmy was doing was st- he would always stop the bleeding in these in the first two three the first two rounds and some games. When they get that 12-0 run, Jimmy come down, get the ball right there on that left side where he loves, and he would get those two. And then you know now we crank it back up. To your point about Duncan and and Caleb and um and Highsmith, they got 20 what high teens 20s. The games we won. Remember that game a couple games ago when there was six players over 15 points. That's what the Heat team need to do. So we got to have the Calebs. We got to have the, the Duncans drop his 20. But you have to have Jimmy get to 30. You have to have Bam get to 20. You got to get 50 out of them too. And now you add the 15 here, the nine from Lowry, and you can get back on top. It's it's just the, the style of basketball, the, t- the, the type of team we have. If our bigs aren't doing it, our big guys aren't doing it, let's be honest. Our ancillary pieces aren't the best. We're not that deep. Whatever you want to say. Our bench isn't winning us games. Our starters, our stars, like Hawk says, our superstars have to win us games. Yeah, 
if they're if they're not playing well, it's cute what Duncan Robinson is doing and what Haywood Highsmith is doing. But if you're not getting production, extra production from Jimmy and Bam and Kyle Lowry, then it's just cute. <laughs> Don't even get me it's started. Great. Don't even get What's me started that? on Kyle Lowry. Are you, are Listen, are you kidding here's me? Here's the thing. Here's the thing about Kyle Lowry, though. I celebrated him yesterday. We talked about Kyle Lowry that, you know, he's worth the contract. Almost did a Sergei Bobrovsky. They're not at this spot right now in the postseason without Kyle Lowry. So no. I'm not flipping on him after one poor game. And it was a poor game. I'm not flipping on him. I'm not doing that. All I want to do is see the Heat team that I saw in the first three games. You know, you said where Jimmy goes, hey, we got to have intensity and, and we've got to have some fight. But it's like, okay, where was it last night? But also where was it for eight quarters? Because it's really been two games. They looked a little lackluster in game four. And I think we all kind of chalked it up to, well, very difficult to sweep any team, let alone the Celtics. And it's now eight quarters of just kind of not that intense Jimmy Butler that had the nation's attention Mm -hmm. through what? Eight through 11 games, right? Solana, 11 victories. Jimmy Butler had the nation's attention, and something has changed over the last couple of games, and I really don't know if it's just fatigue. What happened to the Jimmy? I'm glad you brought this up, Hawk. The Jimmy that was crossing up Drew Holiday, and then and then the big Lopez would come over for that weak side support, and then he'd go right at Brooke Lopez and go up there and up and under. Like, go finish. They're throwing, and Boston doesn't want him to score, obviously. They, they're, they're trying to limit Jimmy. Milwaukee tried to limit Jimmy. The Knicks tried to limit Jimmy. But now it seems like when they do throw that extra guy, okay, yeah, okay. There's a guy over there on the baseline. Like, he's not – he's just not – he doesn't look the same as he did. Hawk, you brought up a great point, too. When you're carrying a team, now it's what, 10 games, whatever, 12 games? Is it fatigue? It makes sense. What what it could be, right? I mean, it's a long season, and now you get to a long postseason. And by the way – Jimmy Butler was not coasting through the first two rounds. Like, you could get to a point of fatigue. I I also wonder, again, I'm not making excuses. I know people are going to say, oh, excuse machine. You know, I wonder his ankle. He had a couple days off between the New York series and the Celtics series, right? I think it was five days because the Heat closed them out on Saturday. They didn't start until Wednesday. And, you know, five days off of that ankle. He comes out first couple games. He looks good. Well, now... You're five games removed, and you only get one day of rest in between. You know, I wonder how much that's also maybe affecting him. But bottom line, Crowder, I'm with you, right? Like, we didn't get that Jimmy Butler last night who was just being as ferocious with the basketball attacking the rim. I understand they're trying to limit him. I know they're sending extra bodies his way. They're trying to do everything they can to keep him from turning into playoff Jimmy. Ten field goal attempts is what frustrates me. That, like, had Jimmy gone out, he just didn't have his jumper, he was playing hard, but, you know, the shots just weren't falling, fine. Ten field goal attempts when you're down 18 the entire game? Ten field goal attempts and only six trips to the line? Like, that just tells me he wasn't engaged in the game, and that's what bothers me. Same goes with Bam Adebayo, man. Like, he had one run in the third quarter where he hit four straight buckets. Oh, great, you're cutting the deficit to 18, but you're not getting stops at the other end. That had to be there, that intensity, from the start, and it wasn't. Got a uh, text from my friend Unfunny Lewis, and he says, why aren't we talking turnovers? And all I can think of is, I'm guessing Lewis didn't hear the first segment of yesterday's show when I talked about his Panther Patrol days and taking (laughs) one in uh, in the junk. (laughs) <laughs> when he was trying to get the Panthers crowd riled up. You missed yesterday's show, Lewis. <laughs> Don't worry I about need, today. I need that video, Hawk. I need that <laughs> I think video. he might have it. I think he might have it. <laughs> I because I think it was Lewis. on the news. I think it was on ESPN, you know, like not top 10. <laughs> and <it> just, man, <laughs> he tried to tough it out and just kind of skate off the ice. Um, we have a loaded potato for you on this Friday. Obviously, we'll talk extensively about the heat. You've got game six tomorrow in Miami. Solana right back to work on a holiday weekend. Very possible that Solana could be going to work on Monday. Very possible we're working on Monday because if it's a game seven, I will be right here. <laughs> um, 
We got a lot to get to. Zach Gelb, our friend from CBS Sports Radio, he's going to join us. We have some interesting stuff to announce on today's show. I think fans of the show will uh, enjoy what they hear, and uh, we'll talk plenty of Panthers as well. Let's get some headlines here uh, at the beginning of the show with Alejandro Solana, who is not going to be downbeat today. Not doing it, man. You're up three games to two. Bro, You would any of us would have taken that a week ago. Any of us would have taken a game six to close out Boston up three to two. Anybody would have. But I would have preferred it coming on the heels of the first three games that I saw in this series, not coming on the heels of the last two games that I've seen this series. Yeah. They want to win it at home, Hawk. They know what they're doing. I hope that's the case. Um, these headlines are driven by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. So tomorrow, 8.30 p.m., game six. I haven't seen an update, by the way, on Gabe Vincent. I was checking right before we came on the air. Ira Winterman and Anthony Chang's Twitter accounts. But uh, I haven't seen any update on it. I imagine we'll get some sort of you know, injury report, early injury report, at, at some point in today's show. Right, but I I wouldn't put too much stock in it because it'll change tomorrow. Yep. So they need they him. missed him last night, and Hunt. and it's a funny thing to say, Gabe Vincent, but they missed Gabe Vincent in a closeout game to send your your team to the NBA Finals. I mean, it's a it's either a testament to him or a question mark as to why he was so important. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, because it it's still a, it's comes down testament. to Bam and Jimmy. So yes. I, I'm, I'm not going, hey, I understand what happened last night. Gabe Vincent wasn't there. Like, no, <laughs> he's playing out of his mind, and it's great, but it's still on Bam and Jimmy. I will tell you this, and it's a testament. I was just looking at the stat sheet. If Gabe Vincent's playing last night, Tatum, Brown, uh, Derek White, and Marcus Smart all drop 20. One of those guys are not getting a 20 if Gabe's playing defense on him. That's a guarantee. And – just going into that first quarter where Miami has six turnovers, I do think the offense was a bit stagnant at points. And, you know, you, you change your starting lineup. And I know Kyle's been with this team now two years, and he was a starter for a lot of the, the, the first part of the season until he got hurt. But that changes the dynamic of the team, right? You had Jimmy as the primary ball handler, Gabe and Max on the outside, constantly moving, and Kyle doesn't play that same role. So there is an adjustment period there. I'm not saying it's an excuse. I'm just right. saying yeah, you don't have no. With the, with, there's no adjustment periods anymore. There, in, in game okay. 47, there's an adjustment period. That, not, not anymore. <laughs> Solana, Solana, this the stagnant offense in the past of this these playoffs. Stagnant offense is handled by Jimmy Butler getting the ball and getting fouled or scoring. That was our catalyst of everything we're doing. Kyle Lowry sitting his old ass in the corner isn't helping us either, but it's Jimmy Butler. It's on his back. When they, when they go on those 8-0, 18-0, 15-0 runs, that's Jimmy's fault. It's and his, and Kyle fault. Lowry has to play better, though. I mean, there's a yeah. reason that he has that big contract, and there's a reason that they kind of allowed him to play possum during the regular season to get to this point. They did it with Goran Dragic in the bubble, right? It was like, okay, just wait, just wait, because – then that veteran guy who's done it before is going to take over. And Kyle Lowry has done that. Last night, something happened. And I don't know what it was. I don't, again, I don't know if it was Boston, if it was the lack of Gabe Vincent, if it was fatigue, if it's a combination of all of those. But, man, it looked different. It's crazy that you say, is it Boston? Because how did they get so good between game three and four? They were good before games one, two, and three. So I, that's what I'm saying. That's why yeah. I'm just a little trepidatious about tomorrow because the Boston team that we beat up on didn't look like the Boston team that any of us watched this postseason. Not at all. I, I also think it's just a, a matter. I really do, and maybe it's oversimplifying it, but their shots early in that game were just wide open, and that, that comes – at a and cost they were of knocking them down. Yeah. They are, they are, but look at the difference in the quality of shots. Anthony Chang had tweeted this out prior to last night's game. In games one through three, the Celtics were averaging 14.3 wide open looks, and that's defined by the NBA, six feet or more of separation. In game four, they had 19 of those. Now, I haven't seen the updated uh, numbers from yesterday. I would imagine they had 19 
in the first six minutes of the game because the Heat are turning the ball over, not getting back on defense with the intensity that they need, and Boston just knocking down wide open, wide open three and after they put wide up open 35 three. Thirty-five points in the first quarter with yeah. ease, easy. by the way, with easy. ease. Yeah. Both shot the three well, thirty-nine and forty-one percent. Right, but the Heat shot sixteen less threes. Yeah, and twenty-three. Sixteen less threes at. At 40%, you can do the math. That's probably the deficit in the game. I cannot do the math, but I'm sure someone can. <laughs> I appreciate you. I appreciate the vote of confidence. And I believe I, I actually saw that in the postgame show. I saw it and I said, boy, someone's going to figure out how many points that actually equals out to. 23 <laughs> three point attempts in a game, I believe, is the least amount Miami's attempted in the postseason. I can barely keep score. I'll be honest with you. When they hit a three, I'm like, no, let's wait a second. That's three. So, yeah, I'm not, that's I'm, that's not my wheelhouse. You, you need an even number to really figure this thing out. Oh, when the dealer flips over an ace, I am donezo. I don't know what I got. I just I just stare and wait and see if they hand me chips or take my chips. It's like so it's, a, it's a one and an 11? Uh, I, I, I don't get this. 